I may have killed a pumpkin on accident, an innocent baby pumpkin. So I have to live with that for the rest of my life, but please don't judge me too harshly. It was an accident. Oops. Hi book friends, welcome back to Books and Tea Time. Today we're doing more fall stuff, more autumnal fall spooky season content. Today we're doing the Cozy Autumn Book Tag. Now the original creator for the Cozy Autumn Book Tag is The Book Bell. I'll have her video linked down below, but also this originally came on my radar because Reagan from the Peruse Project did it after she saw the Book Bells video and I saw Reagan's video. I just thought it would be a really fun cute video to do since it is fall officially um and it's October so I'm just really excited. So I have all the questions written down in my notebook and my answers to the questions so let's get started a moment of silence for jackie the pumpkin that i bought in the last video i'm sure you've noticed that he's not here and he has passed into the beyond um i noticed last night that he had a bunch of mold and he was like falling apart definitely probably my fault for leaving him inside on my dresser i thought the pumpkins could live inside but then i was thinking and i was like you know what i usually see real pumpkins as decorations outside okay question number one <laughs> what book always reminds you of the fall season of autumn and i have two books on this list first to kill a mockingbird by harper lee i don't know why but i feel like every single time that i have read this i think it was in the fall part of the plot is like scout going to school for the first time it's like a subplot in everything that's going on and it just seems like it's autumn is the time of year to read this book and i think it overall when i think of what time of year this book is set in even though it takes place over a long period of time i think of it in terms of autumn i also have this copy up here you guys can probably see it sometimes my one of my favorite teachers if not my favorite teacher from high school actually gifted me this copy and i still have it in like the protective seal but i'll take it out for you guys right now so you can see i just like oh look at that stunning so yes this is like one of my prized possessions it has the cover from the film adaptation so yeah book number one but then also i think anything by austin really reminds me of the fall season but specifically pride and prejudice uh, I really just love Austin's writing and to me it's very cozy, like it fits the cozy autumn book tag. Question number two. <laughs> what is your fave or your most autumnal book cover? So I have a couple options here. I would say like if we're thinking about like the colors of fall, Circe has like this really nice like golden yellowy orange color that like really reminds me of fall leaves or like a really nice orange fall vibe um this is also an excellent excellent novel uh just for any time of year it's by madeline miller who is one of my favorite authors i love madeline miller because i love mythology also i started reading the sundial by shirley jackson last night this is on my tbr for the uh spooky season time um, and we've got like a lot of like yellowy orange tones in this one as well. However, if we're going for a cover that is very spooky and more Halloween-y in that sense, I would say the Barnes & Noble edition of Dracula by Bram Stoker. We've got the black sprayed edges, this really rich red with these like spooky leaves. Um, I just really love it. So... I would say this is my most like Halloween-y gothic spooky cover and these two are my most like autumnal covers. Question number three is what is your favorite autumnal drink to read with? And I'm going to say warm apple cider. Also, uh, if you're looking for an adult beverage for those of us 
who are uh, 21 and up. I just tried this last night. My aunt recommended it to me because I really hate Fireball by itself because I don't like strong cinnamony flavors. However, my aunt recommended that I try putting a shot of Fireball into apple cider and it was incredible. It tasted like I was drinking apple pie. 10 out of 10, absolutely try it out. Or any tea related drink. Um, I drink tea mm -hmm. all the time. This is books and tea time. Some Earl Grey, perhaps some Irish breakfast. Question number four. <laughs> Do you like to read at night or in the morning? Absolutely 100% at night. I'm not a morning person. I'm a night person. I'm a night owl. I stay up really late. So I always read at night. I actually stayed up really late reading the first like 50 pages of this book last night. If you're a fellow night owl, comment an owl emoji in the description box below. Question number five. <laughs> Ooh. Halloween is upon us. What are some of your favorite spooky reads? Now, I've got a couple on this list. Obviously, Dracula. I just showed this to you already. Excellent classic. Vampires. Really spooky. Really atmospheric. Also, it kind of reads like a mystery thriller. It's told through like entries from different characters or through... Uh, there are a couple of newspaper articles, but for the most part, it's you're reading diary and journal entries from different characters and you're reading their letters to each other. And that basically chronicles how they encounter and hunt Count Dracula. Also, another excellent classic, Frankenstein. I am going to be reading this in November for the third time. Frankenstein, the book versus Frankenstein being portrayed in pop culture is very different and reading the book really was just like a wonderful very different experience for me also if you're looking for something that's more on the spooky creepy side but not on the horror side i would say we have always lived in a castle by shirley jackson who is also the author of the sundial my aunt gifted me both of these books and because they're so short and spooky i love it um but they give me like tim burton movie vibes like night before christmas um What's it, the the Corpse Bride, Edward Scissorhands? They give me those. They're like that kind of creepy, spooky, that kind of weird and atmospheric, and just gothic and different. That's the kind of vibe that Shirley Jackson gives me. Follows uh, this family that lives in a very secluded, isolated house, and uh, how they interact with the surrounding neighborhood and how they are very suspicious and possibly murderous so i really love this one i read it in like one sitting and so far this one's really interesting it's about an apocalypse and the family that you follow is like chosen to survive the apocalypse kind of like a really twisted noah's ark vibe if you're looking for some fantasy to read i would highly recommend three dark crowns by kendar blake this is a dark ya fantasy story uh, about a an island that is run by a matriarchy on this island the queen always gives birth to three triplets and the triplets are raised to fight each other to the death on I think their like 18th birthday or something and the surviving triplet becomes queen and then gives birth to three more triplets and it's just like this really interesting cycle and there's a very interesting magic caste system where like there are groups of people with special abilities that relate to the natural world. It's just a really really fun series so I definitely recommend this and now is like the perfect time to be reading these books. Next question number six is <laughs> what is your ultimate comfort read your cozy comfort read and I did mention already that Austin anything by Austin is very comfy cozy I always feel like warm inside but when I am down in the dumps when I'm feeling sad I'm feeling like nostalgic when I, I just feel like when I'm wanting that like nice warm hug feel from a book I read my first favorite book of all time which is Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. <laughs> I, this is the only book I've ever read by Jerry Spinelli. I know he's a popular like children's book or like 
um, elementary, like middle grade author. Uh, but I love this book. I read it for the first time in fifth grade. And I always say this is my first favorite book because I'm just obsessed with it. Uh, and it's about this orphan boy who's really fast and he just runs around and kind of lives like a nomad and then he encounters people in his community and it's just it's the most sweet and wholesome book ever i love it okay uh, favorite autumnal snack uh, i would say pumpkin seeds are really the only like autumn themed snack oh you know what i really love when you go to the pumpkin patch and they have like those um those pecans that are like they have like cinnamon and like sugar on them like they come in that little like cone thing does anyone know what i'm talking about number eight <laughs> your favorite autumnal candle to burn while reading i don't really burn candles a lot i actually just recently got into candles again i had this really delicious lavender vanilla candle from bath and body works and i was going on bath and body works's website to repurchase that candle and i saw this candle it's called pumpkin pecan waffles is this like scent name and i think i'm gonna buy it because that sounds absolutely delightful like the pumpkin scents but also the sweetness of like a pecan waffle also i want to eat that if that's an actual thing that i can order at a restaurant i need to know where to get it because i love breakfast food and like seasonal breakfast foods like autumnal breakfast foods oh my gosh I could die but yeah I'm not really a huge candle person or I wasn't for a very long time because I have this weird fear of fire and my house burning down but you know aside from that personal psychological issue I do like candles and I like the smell that they produce so I probably will uh so yeah I don't know you didn't ask that though so that's not part of the question is what is your psychological damage but oh well <laughs> Question number nine <laughs> is what is your favorite autumnal activity besides reading? And I really love every um, like fall season, just like relaxing on Sunday with Alexander and like just vegging out and watching football and hanging out and talking, maybe do a little homework while we're watching, but cuddle under a blanket, have some yummy food and just relax together and veg out and watch football. So that's one of my favorite activities. Also, um, I don't do this like all during the fall, but at some point in October, I always like to go to a pumpkin patch. Uh, to get a pumpkin to carve and to get those delicious pecan things. Also, there are usually like goats and stuff at the pumpkin patch that you can feed and I love goats so much. I want a pet goat, but you know, unrealistic, can't do it, calm down. The last question, question number 10. <laughs> what is on your fall reading list now i did post a vlog last week where i included my spooky season tbr so i'll have a card for that so you can see all of the books on that list but the books that i am most highly anticipating i picked three uh, one of them is We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is really short and I just am really in the need of some good feminist literature right now. Some motivational stuff, some stuff that's gonna like get me in the zone. I mean, we've got an election coming up at the very, very beginning of November, a very important election. I want to take this moment, first of all, to encourage you to vote. Everybody vote. Do what you have to do to get your ballot in this November. Vote. Democracy is important. Democracy is dope. Anyway, now that we're done with that disclaimer, I'm really looking forward to annotating and reading this one. In terms of scary stuff, I'm really excited for Misery by Stephen King. First of all, because Noelle Gallagher recommended this book and she loves it and she recommends it as a good place for starting with Stephen King. But it's about an author who is kidnapped by his biggest fan and then I think forced to write a sequel or something along those lines and this just feels very like creepy thriller to me and I'm really excited to try it out and get spooked. I honestly haven't ever really read a book that has kept me up at night and really scared me because I don't read a lot of horror or thriller books 
but I want to try it out. So we'll see how this goes. And the last book, I think I'm going to pick this up next after I finish The Sundial. I am very, very highly anticipating Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is a dark academia book uh, about this girl who goes to Yale and I think discovers that there are these weird occult houses uh, on the Yale campus. I'm still not 100% sure what this is about, but you know, that's okay because I haven't read it yet. That's the whole point, right? You know, you read... Uh, it says, this mesmerizing adult debut from Lee Bardugo, a tale of power, privilege, dark magic, and murder set among the Ivy League elite. So yeah, I'm interested. I want to know. So Ninth House is the last book that I am most highly anticipating. Oh, well, this has been the cozy fall autumn book tag. Again, I will leave Reagan's video and the Book Bells video down below for you guys to watch and check out their content. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have so many other exciting autumn themed, spooky, Halloween themed vlogs and videos coming your way in the next couple of weeks. Like, comment, and subscribe if that's your jam. Happy reading, happy writing, and happy living. Bye guys!